Hi, everyone. It's 12 o'clock in the East, 9 o'clock on the West. I'm Jack Munson with Ularity, and this is Quick Fix. The idea here is taking a problem or two from an industry professional and learning how they are fixing it or working on fixing it. The fix may take a while, but the conversation will always stay under 15 minutes every Tuesday. Today, we're talking about using technology to accelerate growth within a franchise system. And I'm joined by my colleague from Ularity, Heather Anderson. Hey, Heather, how are you? Hi, great. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks for joining me here today. Uh, we're talking about technology accelerating growth within a franchise. And I thought you would be the perfect person to bring in for this because you've worked on the technology side, on the supplier side, and on the franchisor side for a few different brands. So let's jump right into it and talk about how we can accelerate growth using technology. Um, let's start with the franchise candidates and uh, franchisees in, in particular. Where, where do we want to jump in today on the tech stack being a differentiator? Yeah, I, I think when we're looking at kind of the importance of tech in the franchising world, it really plays a role across every component, but it starts at the beginning in franchise development. Your tech tools and your tech stack are such a top value in terms of showcasing and differentiating your franchise or support model and helping you stand apart from others within the industry. Um, I, I think for franchisors, having a really thoughtful and impressive use of technology, it, it helps you build that long list of key differentiators outside of just your core business. And then as you look at kind of moving into ongoing operations and the, the real value that it provides in the day to day, you know, we, we've all heard the phrase, there, there are no silver bullets. And that's so true in marketing. But it's not to say that all marketing tactics are created equal. So I, I think for, for teams at headquarters, it's this quest to constantly find and then constantly assess to ensure that you're always curating the most effective mix of technology, whether that's a combination of in-house and outsource support so that you're making your business and just life in general easier for everybody involved, for your franchisees, for your customers, and of course, for yourself at the home office. That ongoing assessment is really interesting to me because I think we're sort of at the stage with some marketing technology and, and definitely in, in the world of social media, where what people started using, let's say 10 years ago, as far as some piece of technology or app that was helping them with things, um, so much has changed and so much changes every six months when it comes to Google and Facebook and everyone else that I think it really probably would do you uh, you would do yourself a great service by reassessing technology not every two years or five years but but keep reassessing what you're doing every six to 12 months do you agree with that I agree and I, I think what's interesting about franchising is it it's important for the home office team to be assessing but we all know that the franchisees are going to be assessing on our behalf anyway so you have to almost constantly be looking at and have a good handle of what's out there in the marketplace because your franchisees are going to bring you have you heard about this tool have you heard about this thing should we be looking at this and it takes time to really be able to formulate and explain a thoughtful perspective on yes, we have, and this is why we're not pivoting in that direction, or this is something that we're looking more into and give us a little time to pull that together. So it you have kind of your, your core things that you're moving forward with, but always keeping the pulse on what is out there in the marketplace so that you're prepared for when those questions or challenges do come up. And, and sometimes those challenges are really helpful. And there was plenty of times in the past that I said, you know what, I hadn't looked at that yet. Let me take a look and get back to you and see. And maybe that is something that, you know, an outside perspective can open your eyes to something that wasn't even on your radar yet. An outside perspective that can help solve your problems, but not add to your problems. And I, I love what you say here about removing operational burden. Tell me more about that. Yeah. So I, I think as, you know, the, the why to add to your tech stack is easy. The why not is a little bit more complicated. I, I think for home office teams, there's always challenges to introducing and integrating new technology, mainly as it relates to that learning curve, the time required for adoption, 
the bandwidth of your team, the bandwidth of your franchisees, everybody has kind of limited brain space wearing a million different hats. It always makes me think of that book when we were kids of caps for sale. The, um, so tech should really remove operational burden at the local level, not add to it. And I think for franchisors, you know, we're always focused on owners and teams being focused on building relationships, fine tuning local level operations, not opening 12 different technology tools a day. Um, so so it's, it's really looking at how to kind of streamline that so that you don't take your eye off the prize with all these new shiny things happening all around you. And each one of those new shiny things uh, should have a minimal amount of training or onboarding or something like that. I think one of the things I see in this industry very different from, let's say, 12 years ago, is any type of technology back then was going to require training and more training and, oh my gosh, even in-person training at times, right, where people needed to basically learn software and how to use an entire new system. And, and I think that's pretty much a non-starter with any franchise brand I see right now. Yeah. And, and franchisees, you know, a, a lot of brands have very tenured owners that have been in the system for 20 years plus new owners. So there's this like big span of um, knowledge and a lot of knowledge gaps to fill to make sure that you're kind of playing to all all denominators across the board. And so I think looking at tech partners that take more of a, a user first mentality when they're building their software so that you feel really confident that anybody can dig in and start playing around and figure it out versus needing a lot of that training and a lot of ramp up time in order to get full value out of the tool. You mentioned earlier how things have changed drastically over the past two or three years. Tell me more about how uh, the pandemic has changed our need for technology within a franchise system. Yeah, I think if if we're looking for a silver lining from the pandemic, and I'm always looking for <laughs> silver linings, I love shiny things. Um, I, I think what was interesting about that time period is it created this new need state that really fast tracked technology adoption to lightning speed. It showed home office teams and franchisees just how fast they could move when they needed to move really, really, really fast. Um, and, and I think what we found was, okay, we can do it, but this is not sustainable. That, that kind of breakneck pace is burnout inducing. And so I think as franchisors have kind of stepped back and looked at that very specific period of time and everything that was accomplished during that time, which was amazing, I think the recovery from all of that whiplash has put us somewhere between, I like to say, the marathon and the sprint. You know, everybody was moving at a little bit of a slower pace beforehand, um, looking for rolling things out when it, when it has every bow tied on the package before you would hand it out. And I, and I think there's now that been this balance of rather than like the throw it out and test it, and rather than the bow, they're, they're kind of figuring out there's an in-between here where we can move a lot faster than we thought we could, but we can also slow down and give ourselves a little bit of a break and do it in a little bit more of a, a calculated way. Excellent. Let's jump ahead into some of the things that franchise systems can really lean into. And, and by the way, I have to say, I think this is the first quick fix webinar we've done that did indeed have an Avengers of movie graphic in Welcome. it. So kudos yeah. to you on that. And I'm going to save that for the end. It's just like incentive to, to stay <laughs> with us for the next five minutes or however long is left. Um, Excellent. <laughs> so I, I guess as you're kind of talking about like where to lean in, I think the first big thing is really understand your ability to influence the technology roadmap. When you're assessing a new tech partner, it's important to understand kind of what role does customer feedback, you as the customer, play in driving their product roadmap, and also how fast can they move? So if they tell you, yeah, we absolutely take customer feedback, we'll have that back to you in two years, that's really not going to cut it. So I think especially for, is that Jack in costume? It, it is actually this. this. They, they caught me. Yeah. Thank and. you. <laughs> um, I, I think especially for the franchising industry, it's so important that you're not afraid to voice your business needs. One of the great things about this community is that we all have common shared challenges. So what is impacting one is likely going to be impacting others. And 
I love when a technology platform, you know, shameless plug, that's why I fell in love with you already, and that's why I'm here, is able to take customer feedback and pivot when and where appropriate to be able to continue to craft their product to match the needs of the market space. Um, and, and that's not always common. So I think knowing that each franchise partner is bringing a slightly different, unique perspective to the game, having somebody that really can be a true partner and help you solve challenges is something that's so important to understand on the front end and so important to lean into during the life of that relationship to really get the full value out of it. That's a really interesting point about understanding the market, because I think a lot of people look at the tech leaders in the world, the, the Steve Jobs of the world, over the past couple of decades and, and saying, wow, they really, he really delivered on what customers need, not what they want and not what they're really asking for at the time. So I think there's a balance there though, because what he did and what all great tech companies do is they understand the marketplace. So they can anticipate what you're going to need, even if it isn't exactly what the customer is looking for or asking for at the time. A hundred percent. Yeah, there has to be that balance between customer feedback that benefits the masses, but then also those industry trends, those industry necessary updates, being able to kind of look into your crystal ball and look ahead at what's going to be best for everybody. I think that thoughtful balance is always so critical. So you mentioned uh, coming to you, Larity, and uh, before you were working with me every day, you were actually a customer of ours. So uh, <laughs> yeah. tell, tell us a little bit about that. So I partnered with you, Larity, right before the pandemic, which in hindsight actually wound up being perfect timing. Um, it, it sure didn't feel like it at the time when we were getting ready to roll out and then we were closing all of our locations. But they, they really be able helped us through a very critical time. And I, I think as, I'm kind of getting to the next bullet in this, which I wasn't meaning to, so thanks for that pivot. Um, looking at multi-use tools to really be able to scale multiple business operations. So we, we talked earlier about the franchisors are wearing a million hats, but the most important and the biggest hat of all, the sombrero, if you will, should be their relationship building sombrero. And that they're on that local level, really making sure that they're putting the time and the work and the effort into their customers, their team members, not opening a million tools a day. And so looking at how your tech removes that operational burden so they're not opening a million tools, um, looking for things that can kind of have multi-use and multi-scale. So for Ularity at the time, when I had brought them in, it was purely for local marketing, but then found I needed a way to be able to pivot and be able to run national marketing at scale in a really easy way at a lower cost than what I was used to with a traditional media agency because everybody was scraping pennies together and trying to make them sound like manhole covers at the time. Um, so being able to use it for consumer for both local and national, but then see what other possibilities are there. I think one of the things that we're finding with a lot of the clients that we work with is, yeah, consumer marketing is great, if you have the team to be able to back it up and fulfill the demand. And so being able to use then those marketing tools to lean into employer marketing and recruitment marketing and branding yourself as a top employer of choice has become an area where a lot of our clients have been able to pivot easily so that they can keep up with that consumer demand. Um, and then franchise development, kind of filling out that full picture and perspective. We have a lot of brands that are starting to lean into that as well through the tools so that they're able to kind of look at everything all at once through one command center um, and really just streamline their internal operations. Very good. And finally, uh, in the few minutes we have left, tell us about machine learning, AI, and our friend Thanos here. Yeah, so so I think as, as we talked about a little bit earlier in terms of looking at companies that, um, where you really understand the technology roadmap, I think also finding partners that are leaning into what's new on the forefront, what's coming down, leaning into AI and machine learning to enhance their solutions. Um, and there's ways that we're, this is happening to marketers every day, even without all these tech tools, just through Google's responsive search ads, for instance, and the machine learning that's happening there. There is my dog. This is live television, everybody. Uh, Hazel, come here. Uh, but there, so uh, what I wanted to end it with is some other fun ones. Can, she also wants to participate in this conversation. All uh, are welcome here. 
So two of my favorite ones that are kind of outside of the space are Jenny AI, which is a uh, AI copywriting tool. So for anybody in marketing that wears a lot of hats and writes a lot, um, it's a nice way to kind of balance out what you're doing. There must be somebody in the backyard right now uh, breaking in, which is excellent. Uh, and then my other favorite one, if you haven't played around with it, is Doll E, uh, which is, I think they just changed to crayon, which is you could type in any weird phrase that you can think of, um, such as Thanos looking for his mom in a Walmart. This was one of my favorite examples. And it will make that image for you. Um, so a, a little bit less of a direct connection for how you might use this in marketing. It could be really fun with social media for sure. But if you don't have a photo shoot budget and you've got some kind of crazy concept that you need to put out there, um, check out that tool. That's that's my little little piece of flair for you for the day. Okay, now you know what I'm going to be doing all afternoon is uh, is making things with that tool. So thank you so much for joining us today, Heather. If anyone has uh, further questions for you or they'd like to connect with you, where can we send them? Um, come find me on LinkedIn, actually. I would love that and love to meet and connect with others in the franchising space. Very good. And if anyone has questions or comments about this series, please find me on LinkedIn as well. And if you'd like to learn a little bit more about Ularity, please join us at ularity.com slash contact us. And we will see you next Tuesday, everyone. Thank you.